Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff that is why i'm such a big fan of chumba casino chumba casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime anywhere with daily bonuses that should brighten your day a little actually a lot so sign up now at chumbacasino.com that's chumbacasino.com no purchase necessary btw void were prohibited by law see terms and conditions 18 plus Presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week we heard how Jungle Jim rescued Bob McGuire after both had rushed into the burning hotel searching for McGuire's wife, Connie. A short time later, after they had all returned to Dragon Inn, Jim and Lil were eating their dinner when they were visited by the silent one who warned them that unless they persuaded Bob McGuire to give up the map showing the location of the hidden jewels of the great Genghis Khan, all would be killed. After talking to the silent one, Jim and Lil rushed upstairs to warn the McGuires. There they discovered Kolo, who had just returned from Mandalay, and were told that Bob and Connie McGuire, disguising themselves as natives, had gone into the jungle to search for the jewels. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full color, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. Jungle Jim, Shanghai Lil, and O.P. Watts are on the trail of McGuire and Connie. They have had an uneventful journey of several days and are now nearing Fort Jamrud, the first of the four great British forts that guard the route into Afghanistan. Hmm, how much further is this fort, Jim? Seems as if I've been on this horse for a month. Yeah, it's been a long trip, Lil. But I don't think we've much more to go now. I don't mind telling you that I'll be glad when we get there. Yeah, I heartily agree with you, Mr. Brill. Heartily. This horse is an old model. Has no shock-absorbing qualities. None at all. <laughs> oh, you'll get used to that, Opie. Now, look. According to this map, the fort should be a mile or two ahead. Colo. Yes, it one. I expect we'll come inside of Fort uh, Jam right at the top of the next hill. Right ahead. And if I'm right, signal it. And then you keep going and present my compliments to Colonel Hammond. He's expecting it. Yes, it one, Jim. Why couldn't we have speeded up a little ourselves, Jim? Don't forget, we've got O.P. with us. Hey, hey, what's that? What's that? What are you two mumbling about? Uh, we were just discussing the fact that Colonel Hammond is expecting us, O.P. And I hope he has some news for us. I can't understand why no one has seen Bob McGuire's caravan go through. Uh, neither can I, Mr. Real. Can't understand it. A caravan is a pretty hard thing to miss. Well, we'll probably get the information we're after, all right. Don't forget, a lot of travelers go this way. Besides, McGuire knows that the silent one is following him and has disguised himself and his wife. Oh, Jim, that's Colo's signal. He's waving. Well, that means that Fort Jamrud is just ahead. Come on. Get up, Rick. Get up. I never did like horses. Get up, Rick. <laughs> if we ever get in a tight spot, Jim, we're going to have some fun with O.P. <laughs> Between his horse and that umbrella he tries to hold over his head every time the sun comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lil, maybe we can persuade him to stay behind when we'll reach the fort. Here's the top of the hill. Uh, at last, the fort. Well, we've reached it. Now, maybe I can get off of this animal. Yes, and they've seen us coming, Jim. See, the gates are opening. You're right, Lil. Come on, Opie. Uh, hey, why do we have to hurry now? That must be Colonel Hammond there inside the gates. Evidently, he heard from Colonel Scott. Scott said that he'd get a message through. Well, here we are. I'm glad to get down off this horse. And I'll bet our friend O.P. is, too. <laughs> oh, uh, Bradley, Bradley, uh, uh, can you give me a hand? Uh, oh, I'm stuck. I, I can't seem to get loose from this animal. <laughs> just a minute, O.P., just a minute. Give me a hand. Oh, uh, the horse was a terrible uh, invention. Make it easy. Terrible, terrible. No conveniences at all. None at 
Uh -oh. All right. Oh. There you are. Oh, Jim, here's the Colonel. Uh, uh, your jungle, Jim Bradley. Uh, that's right, Colonel Hammond. Uh, good, Bradley. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. No, thanks, Colonel. May I present my companions, Mr. Vreel and Mr. O.P. Watts, uh, who is uh, slightly the worst for wear. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you the fellow that's in charge around here? Why, uh, yes, I am. Well, uh, then why don't you have your men build some roads through this godforsaken country? Well, I'm crippled. Crippled, I tell you. Well, I uh, oh, I'm you'll sure. you'll get used to it, O.P. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Colonel. We've all heard about you. Uh, thank you. I've heard of you, Mr. Vreel. I had a wireless chat with Colonel Scott this morning. He advised me of your coming. And what facilities we have here are at your disposal. Thanks, Colonel. Uh, but I say, we shouldn't be standing out here. You're just in time for dinner. Over this way. Yeah, dinner. Dinner, of course. And if you don't mind, Hammond, I'll eat my dinner standing up. That oh, confounded oh, oh, oh. horse. <laughs> well, yes, yes, I understand. Uh, uh, Colonel, I suppose you know our mission here. And Mr. Watt's son-in-law and his daughter are supposed to be headed this way. Oh, yes. You mean the young um, Guire and his wife. They were traveling light. Oh, you've seen them? Yes, of course. They spent last night here. They headed into the hills north of the pass. Well, that's contentory, that. Uh, you say they were here last night, Colonel? Well, yeah. then they can't be far ahead of us, Bradley. That means they're safe. We won't have to run after them. You don't know what you're talking about, O.P. All right, Mr. Veal. I try to dissuade them. The natives of the African hills are far from friendly. They're gangs of cutthroats, as a matter of fact. However, your son-in-law refused to listen to me. Yeah, stubborn. Pig-headed. Why, well, I tried to talk to him on shipboard. He wouldn't even listen to me. Wouldn't listen. Oh, never mind that now, O.P. Yeah. Uh, Colonel, you say that McGuire and his wife uh, left here this morning. Yes. Now, uh... How far would you say they travel today? Well, with the outfit they had, not more than 30 or 40 miles. 30 or 40 miles, eh? Well, that means I can catch up with them before morning. Jim, what are you thinking? That Bob McGuire and Connie ought not to get in the Afghan hills alone. I'm going after them, Lil. You and O.P. stay here. Nothing doing, Jim. If you go, I'm going with you. Boy, bring those horses back here. Uh, but I say, you can't go at night and without eating. Why, of course not, of course not. Why, well, I wouldn't climb on a horse for a meal. Not for a meal. Well, I think differently, Colonel. Those two have got to be stopped before it's too late. You're right about that, but... Uh, uh, well, Bradley, from what I've heard of you and Mr. Vril, you're both able to take care of yourself. Don't worry about us. Very well. Boy, bring two fresh horses. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing more, Colonel. Uh, how were McGuire and his wife disguised? Uh, uh, as natives. And not a bad disguise, either. Well, here are your horses. Oh, fine. And good luck. Uh, ready, Lil? Right with you, Jim. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We just got here. Well, this is most unusual. Oh, you're, you're, you're mad, Bradley. And how about our dinner? You stay here and eat it. We'll see you sometime tomorrow, O.P. And we'll bring your daughter and Bob McGuire back with us. Meanwhile, far ahead, Bob McGuire and his wife, Connie, study a map as night settles over the hill. Now, according to this map, Connie, we'll reach the place where the jewels are hidden in another day or two. You see, there's Fort Jamal. And we're camping about here. I see. Oh, Bob, I can't help but worry. Do you think we're being followed by that man who calls himself the Silent One? No, Connie, we're rid of him. By getting out of Calcutta when we did, we've thrown everyone off our trail. They probably think we were lost in the fire. Yes, but Jungle Jim and Shanghai Lil know that we weren't. I know, but they'd never let it get to the Silent One. And, darling, even if someone did find out, they could never trace us. They'd look for a white man and his wife in the jungle. And we've traveled disguised. Well, just the same, darling. I'll be glad when we found the jewels. Oh, so will I. Bob, look. There's a man over near our horses. And he's not one of our natives. Where? Oh, I don't see anyone. He's gone now. Bob, I could swear that he wasn't one of our boys. <laughs> oh, nonsense. You're nervous. It, it's getting too dark to see very well anyway. But, Bob, this man was dressed differently. And we haven't heard the natives around. Let's go see. But just imagine anything. I'll call our head boy. Oh, Darcy! He doesn't answer. That's funny. Darcy! He's gone, Bob. Come on, we'll find out what's going on. Darcy, where are you? Bob, I'm frightened. That must be around here somewhere. I saw them just a few minutes ago. Darcy, where are you? Answer me! Bob, look over there, near the horses. Of course, I told you they hadn't gone far. Yes, but then they're mounting. Say, you're right, Connie. Darcy! Darcy, come back here! Bob, they're not going to wait for us. And look, there's that man I saw. See the one on the white horse? He's not one of our men. I've never seen him before. Get down off those horses and come back here. They're leaving us. Wait. The man on the white horse is coming this way. Say, who are you, anyway? What's going on here? Your men have been ordered to return to their homes, sire. It will be necessary for you to continue alone. Oh, no. Well, we can't leave us here. 
<laughs> Those men are under orders to me. I paid them. I'm very sorry, sir, but they have had orders from another whom they dare not disobey. Oh, please tell them to come back. We'll be lost out here alone. Most sorry, ma'am, sir. It has been ordered that those who travel in Afghanistan travel alone. And who issued that order? The Maharaja of Ibor. Now I bid you goodbye. Wait, wait. I have a message for your Maharaja. Tell him that he's not going to stop us. That we'll go on if we have to go along. May I suggest that you give him that message yourself, Sahib? <laughs> Later that night, as Jim and Lil travel through the jungle darkness in their attempt to locate Bob and Connie, McGuire, another scene is taking place deeper in the hills where a huge bearded man sits in a darkened room in a lamissary. Coming. Yes. So you are back. You have carried out orders which I gave you this afternoon. The white ones are now alone, Highness. Their men have been sent back to their home. Uh, we will see what they will do tomorrow. What of the second caravan? Our men report that it entered the gates of Fort Jamro just before nightfall. Tomorrow, they too will continue their journey. You have orders. When they stop tomorrow night, their men also are to desert. It shall be done as you wish, Hannes. When they make camp tomorrow night, their men will be returned to their home. Ah, uh, good. What of the one who carries the map, Hannes? We could have taken it this evening. No, he is not to be molested. Not until I have had a talk with him. He cannot escape now. The map is safe. But the white woman is with him, Highness. She is young. Perhaps the hillmen will descend upon her. You need have no fear, fool. The Afghan hillmen do not interfere with those who come to visit the Maharaja of the ball. I have issued orders that they are to be allowed to continue northward at their will. And if they choose to turn back? You forget... The silent one waits, and they know that death lies behind them. The route to the north is open. As soon as they near this Lamasari, one of my men will be sent out to welcome them. That may not be necessary, Highness. The map they carry shows location of this Lamasari, and there is notation that travelers are welcome. I have not forgotten. The map was made many years ago. They will be welcomed. The old Lama himself will be allowed to leave his cell to escort them within the gates. You have yes. planned well, Highness. Yes. At last we are to have the jewels of the great Genghis Khan. We have waited many years. There is also other wealth, Highness. What do you mean, speak? Of the three in caravan that follows, one is the father of the girl who is the wife of Saib Maguire. Yes, I have that report. It is reported that he is an American, Highness, a yes. banker of great wealth. Uh, that's interesting. You say he is with the second caravan. Yes, Hannah. Then they too are to be guarded until they reach the gate. You will hold them for ransom? We will hold all, except old Americans. He will be escorted back to Fort Jamrod. But, Your Highness, surely he will return with the troops to free his daughter. You forget, fool. The authorities believe this Lama Sare to be still in the hands of the monks. They do not dare to interfere with the religious order. But the old one has the gold, Your Highness. It is he who will pay us the ransom. I know that, fool. We shall not only have the jewels of the great Genghis Khan, but also the gold of the Americans. What is the fate of Bob and Connie McGuire? Will they seek shelter at the old lamissary and be trapped? And will Jim and Lil follow them? The adventures you have just heard dramatized will appear in full-color action pictures in next Sunday's Comic Weekly, the big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's Skippy, the Cats and Yammer Kids, Jigs and Maggie, the page entitled Gags and Gals, Barney Google, Toots and Casper, the Little King, and Flash Gordon. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly. And don't forget our date next week. Same time, same station for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.